Corliss of Tormach, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the six inch fourth axes with a four jaw um, chuck. These are independent four jaw chucks, which means each jaw is independent of the other one, so you can adjust them to center your workpiece. It also means that to re you only have one set of jaws, so you can back it out all the way. And then you can reverse them if your workpiece demands that. So that's the four jaw on the six inch head. And then this is the tail stock that we'll use to support the end of our workpiece. Um, it's just there to help uh, strengthen the part. This is the workpiece we're going to be uh, setting up. Uh, and I want a center drill hole in the end of it for their tail stock. So I'm going to edge find using the electric edge finder to find the center of the uh, workpiece. Why not do the same in X? Jog until the edge finder lights up. Zero my axes. Jog over and touch on the other side. And then we just divide that by two and then that's our X, Y, there. it's going to be our X zero over here because we've already done that, we've done Y. Now we're lined up on X, Y, zero and we can center drill it. It's a number three center drill, and it kind of depends on how big a center drill you're allowed in your workpiece and how big of a center you're using. Uh, number three is kind of a standard, standard general purpose center drill. It'll work good for what we're doing. Now I've put the workpiece in the four jaw here. I ran an indicator along the piece and I shimmed my chuck a lot like we did at, um, for the uh, three jaw chuck. So I know that the chuck's level and then I, uh, I tap my piece around so that's in there straight. So now we got to indicate the part in so it's running true with the axis, the fourth axis. So bring my indicator down. Check to see if I'm level this way. I have to indicate my part in. I have to tweak it a little bit. Nothing. Back and forth. I want the indicator to read pretty close to we'll final it when we're all done squaring it up, but just so it's just so it's relatively flat. Then I can zero my A axes. And what I'm gonna do is also zero my Z for the indicator. Raise my Z up out of the way. And then index the head 180 degrees. G0 A180.
Come down and zero the indicator and then we'll see what the difference is on our DRO. So the DRO has 94 thousandths on it. So we have to move that part, have that 47 thousandths, we have to shift the part to get it centered on the chuck. You're not going to be able to just tighten this jaw 47 thousandths. So it's a matter of tightening this side, indexing, and loosening up the other side. So what did you actually do there? I'm a little confused. I zeroed the indicator and then I checked to see what the DRO said. And that tells me how far off I was from the first, um, when I first zeroed the indicator. I can zero it on this side again. And we're, we're a ways off. Zero the indicator and zero the readout. Raise the Z. Index. And then bring the axes down to the indicator, read zero again, and just check to see what the difference is with the DRO. So now we're pretty close. Now it's just a four and a half thousandths difference. And this side's a little bit low. So if we raise this right there. Now the indicator is zero and our readout's within three tenths. So that's that's really pretty good. And then I just repeat for the um, at 90 degrees. Do the same, it's the same procedure. Just zero your indicator, zero your readout, index at 180, and then keep moving your jaws until you bring it in so it's zero from both sides. Um, now that I know that it's zero this way. I can kind of look to see where the position is of the jaw on the face of the chuck, and I can move the other ones. If you can see the edge of the jaw to the where the lines are in the face of the chuck, you can kind of eyeball it up, and you can get pretty close to it that way. If you look, you can kind of see where the corner of the the jaw is, the corner, and there's lines in the face of the chuck. If the part zero in this direction. Now if you look, you can see the difference in the jaw. 
to the line here. Just to get this this way close, I can just loosen it up and move it until the jaw is pretty much the same as where this one is, just to, just to save a little time. And this axis I know is true because I just indicated it in, and I kind of see where it's in relation for this jaw, and then I'll eyeball the, the front and back jaw so they're approximately in the same position before I start indicating. Good. Zero and zero. Now we know that the, the, this end of the part is running true with the axes. Now we want to support it with the tail stack. We want to put the tail stock in so this reads, so it holds the piece right at zero. zero or indicator up here and then jog down to the other end tail stock okay now we want to bring the tail stock in until our indicator reads zero just like we had on the other end. You want to push on it a little bit just to make sure it's supporting it. Just snug up our clamps. Make sure everything stays where we want it.
then jog back to the other end and see how, see how it looks. Seeing we're supporting the end with the tailstock, we might have to adjust it a little bit. That's pretty good, but that's the general idea of it. Indicate it in with the head first, then bring your tail stock in, and then as you tighten it down, make sure nothing moves around on you. And then you're going to want to index at 90 and repeat, and you're also going to want to check it on the side to make sure everything's true this way. They both got alignment key, so you should be good, but it's, it's worth checking. That's how you set up a square part using the four jaw and the fourth axis.